Job chapter number 14. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you for good singing. We thank you for being a good shepherd. Lord, we wouldn't know how to find our way to anywhere but hell had it not been for you. God, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for pay, putting the pay in our sin debt. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for coming to where we was and revealing unto us our lost condition. God, thank you for an altar of repentance. When we called on you, God, you heard and answered prayer. And God, you forgave us of all our sin. Lord, I'm glad even though my sins were scarlet, they were white as wool because of the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. God, we're thankful to be able to come out on this Sunday morning and worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, I realize, Father, that folks have been busy. They've been running to and fro and all the events of holiday. And, Lord, uh, 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 so much going on in our lives. But, God, we're glad for this oasis, this refuge, this place you have provided where we can come and center our thoughts and our hearts upon thee. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us over the next few minutes. Uh, I pray for every saint of God that, God, you'd do something for them today. God, you'd refresh them and revive them. God, I pray if there's any in our midst unsaved, lost without God. Uh, God, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, I pray today would be the day that they'd fall out of love with sin and fall in love with the Savior. Uh, God, I pray that, God, you would just do something uh, supernatural and something unusual in our midst today. Father, we'll not fail to bless you and praise you for it. Uh, Father, get glory to your name. We'll thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful and holy name, we ask these things. Uh, amen and amen. Uh, I want to draw your attention to a couple things from these verses. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, life's, ex uh, in, I can't even say it, life uh, expectancy. Mm, the Bible says, man that is born of a woman is of few days. Friend, if you're blessed to live a hundred years in this life, that's but just one grain of sand upon the seashore compared to eternity. Amen. Our lifespan in this world uh, is not one you can bank on. From the moment you take your first breath, death is on your trail. Can I say the Bible makes it clear if you're blessed beyond 70 years, you are blessed. But you don't know the number of days you have in this life. Only God does. But make no mistake, God has numbered your days. And friend, uh, 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 this might even be your last day. I had a phone call yesterday from a funeral director saying, Preacher, can you preach a funeral? This family didn't have a preacher. Can you preach this funeral? What I'm trying to say is there are people dying every day. And friend, one day you're going to die. Our life expectancy is just a few days. It amazes me how when we get a few years on us, how quickly the days begin to come. I can't believe we're already at the end of December. Seems like we're just having Thanksgiving dinner. Now we're looking at New Year's. For long it'll be spring. Hallelujah. But friend, you don't know if you've got till spring. You don't even know if you've got till New Year's. You better make certain you're right with the Lord and you're following where he's a leading. Hmm? We see life's expectancy is but a few days. Notice, if you will, life's enduring. Look what it says. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Seems like most of what we endure in this life is trouble. Seems like every now and then we'll get to the mountaintop, but you know what I found? On that once you get to the mountaintop, then you go down the other side and there's another valley. You're going to face trouble in this life. You're not exempt from trouble based on your address. 
You're not exempt from trouble based on how much money you got in your bank account. You're not exempt from trouble even if you're a born again child of God. Troubles are coming. Can I say in the beginning it wasn't so, Brother James? In the beginning when God created man, he placed him in a place where there was no trouble, where there was no problems, uh, where there was nothing to harm. But because man chose to sin, trouble came. And no one is exempt from trouble. Now I know what the devil does. The devil will play in your mind. You'll come in to sit in a sanctuary like this, get to looking around, uh, and you get to thinking, boy, they have no troubles. They have no problems. They have no hogwash. From the pulpit to the back pew, we all face trouble. Life's enduring is that you endure trouble. Why do you think Paul pinned down endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ? Endure hardness. You're going to face some trouble. We see life's expectancy. We see life's enduring. But notice life's ending. Look at verse 2. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Mm, friend, our ending comes just abruptly. In the springtime, them flowers bloom, but in the fall, they're gone. But I've got news for you. If they're not watered and nurtured properly, they'll be gone before fall. See, in James, it writes that our life is like a vapor. It's here now, and then it just dissipates. It's gone. Isn't it amazing? You're born into this world, and there's an announcement. You came. People are excited. Mamas and daddies and grandma and grandpas are excited. But before long, there's another announcement. It's called an obituary, and you're gone. I spend so much time in the funeral business, it's amazing to me how little people come out to see folks once they're gone. I can remember as a kid, funerals, I mean, you'd have a visitation in one evening, and I mean, the places would be packed, uh, and then the next day would be the funeral service, and the place would be packed. Uh, 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 but not, that's not the case anymore. People don't want to be bothered with death. Used to... People were dying in the hospital. The screams would bring terror to everyone on the ward. Now they just give them morphine or shove them off into hospice and, and they slowly let death come to them and they give that morphine so that people don't feel the pain. But it doesn't change the suffering. My dear friends, deaths are coming. Even though we don't want to deal with death, even though we don't want to be reminded of death, death's coming. The only way you're getting out of death is if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and you're alive when He comes. But my dear friends, life is going to end for you in this life and this flesh one day. I wonder, are you ready? I got to thinking about these verses that man's days are, man born of a woman's days are few and full of trouble. This is what I want to preach on this morning. I want to preach on life is not a Hallmark movie. Life is not a Hallmark movie. Now you may be blessed not to have TV or have cable, know what Hallmark is. Let me help you with something. Here is every Hallmark's movie. There's a situation that causes somebody to go back to their hometown. They get back to their hometown, and once they're there, they find out that uh, there's something that needs their expertise in their hometown. And so they get involved in their hometown. And while they get involved in their hometown, there's somebody that catches their eye. Usually they don't like each other to start with, but they get uh, uh, caught up in the same project, and uh, uh, the more they spend time with one another, the more they get to goo-goo eyes for one another. But they still don't know about one another until their snowflakes start to fall. And when the snowflakes fall, the smooching is on. 
and everybody lives happily ever after forevermore. That's a Hallmark movie. You've seen one, you've seen them all. The faces may change, but the plot never does. Mm -mm. But life's not a Hallmark movie. You know why we like Hallmark movies? Because it causes us to escape reality for just a few minutes and feel better about life. It gets our minds off the fact that we are facing trouble. But see, life's not a Hallmark movie. Hmm? Wish it was. Huh? I wish every, every town was like the, all them towns they show. Huh? There's always a parking spot on Main Street. Huh? There's always a pastry shop. Every Hallmark movie, there's somebody selling sweets. What a blessing. Hmm? And nobody gains any weight. But can I say life's not a Hallmark movie? You say, preacher, how can you say that? Well, first of all, because of the peril in the streets. The most difficult thing they deal with in the Hallmark movies is whether or not they have enough funding for the Christmas fair. There's always a problem. They need to get money so they can have uh, their big Christmas extravaganza. But you see, that would be a minor problem in our streets. You see, our streets are filled with violence. This year, I believe Cincinnati set a record for the most murders that's ever had. In our streets, it's not only streets of violence, there's streets of racism. There's streets of uh, anarchy. In our country, there have uh, been cities that have been burnt down because of uh, somebody that... Uh, 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 their life was taken by a police officer. And by the way, let me help you with something. A uh, 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 police officer would never have taken anybody's life if they just comply. Uh, if the police officer tells you to get out of your car, get out of your car. They're not doing it because they're bored. Hmm? Trust me, there's donut shops everywhere. They're doing it because they suspect something about you. So if you comply and get out of your car, let them uh, answer their questions and, and let them uh, ask a few things. And if they want to search your car, if you don't have anything to be ashamed of, let them search your car. Worst thing you can do is not comply. Pull a weapon. Run from them. Hmm? You're going to have some problems then. What I don't understand, Brother Donald, is everyone that uh, uh, loses their life at the hand of a police officer, and by the way, the police officers are standing between us and the anarchy, and the only ones that lose their lives, uh, uh, their mamas and their sisters get on the t uh, airways and talk about what a great Christian boy he was, uh, only to find out he had nine or ten warrants for his arrest. Uh, he was a drug dealer. Uh, he was a thug. He was a thief. He'd been in and out of the prison system for years. And hey, that doesn't sound like a good Christian boy to me. Amen. Anarchy breaks out in our streets. Uh, uh, isn't it amazing? Uh, they'll bust out the windows, steal everything from every store, uh, and nothing is ever said about them. Uh, but if you and I uh, cross our eyes, they want us thrown in jail, huh? Live in a day and age where if you've got a pronoun attached to your name like his or hers, then you're wicked, you're ungodly, you're part of the problem, uh, and you need to be canceled. Mm. Well, I'm a he and a him. I'm not a shim. And I don't care what you identify as, that doesn't change what you was born as. Mm. here in a couple weeks I'm getting on a plane I'm going to identify as a congressman so I don't have to wear a mask on a plane mm. I am the congressman of my little portion of my, room, of my house that Miss Annette lets me rule <laughs> what can I say Life's not a Hallmark movie. There are perils in the streets. 
there is a heroin epidemic in the streets of America. Although COVID seems to cure it because we don't hear anything about it anymore. Can I say uh, there is an alcohol problem in the streets of America? Can I say there's an illegal alien problem in America and the streets of America? How come uh, uh, Americans uh, have to be vaccinated but illegals don't? Do you realize this past week they caught one of the one of the most well-known terrorists uh, uh, that has been suspected of all kinds of wrongdoing in the Middle East? They caught him crossing our southern border. They caught one. How many didn't they catch? Hmm. I said 10 years ago, and y'all thought I was a racist, but I told you 10 years ago, look at the names of those they're catching doing most of the violent murders in America. They all come with a Mexican name. Then they were here illegally. If they come across illegally, you think they're going to be legal when they get here? Hmm. There's peril going on in our streets. Hmm. Life's not a Hallmark movie. Not only because of the peril in our streets, but because of the pain and suffering. Nobody suffers in them Hallmark movies. Well, you talk to folks and there's no one who's not been affected by somebody who's in pain or who's suffering. Can I say? Life is full of hurt. You get cut, and you dress that cut properly, and it heals in a form of scar, of scars to remind you that you've been hurt. We've all got scars. Can I say, Brother James, the physical scars, they'll heal. A lot of the emotional scars don't. There are people who face emotional scarring every single day of their life. Things that have happened in their life that they cannot get over. Life's full of hurt. Life's full of helplessness. There are some things out of our control. There are some situations that all we can do is pray about. You feel helpless. You want to get involved. You want to solve the equation. You want to solve the problem, but it's much too big for you and I. Life's full of hopelessness. I don't know about you, but outside the Lord Jesus Christ, I really believe there's no hope for America. I believe America's gone too far. I really believe America's already been sold out. We just haven't been told yet. Hmm? How come the current so-called president shuts down a pipeline where we can be oil independent here, but yet he's begging for Russia, China, and OPEC to open up their oil and lower their prices so it affects us? Because they already own us. He voted for the Russian pipeline, but he closed ours and shut down 15,000 jobs in the process. How many likes that $3 plus a gallon gasoline? You can blame the White House. It's sad what's happening to America in a year. A year ago, America was strong. Now not only is our economy not strong, our leadership's not strong, and the uncertainty of this land is absolutely total chaos. I said this in my Sunday school class. I read this three different places this week. This will really be a blessing to you. There's already talks going on that they're going to uh, they're going to a call for the 25th Amendment, remove Biden from office that he didn't rightly win anyway. And then Kamala's going to take over and Hillary is trying to negotiate being the vice president. 
which means Kamala will be in office about three days and then she'll have a, a, just, a, 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 just an unbelievable suicide somehow. Hmm. I'm telling you, that outfit's wicked up there. Life's not a Hallmark movie. It's not because of the pain and suffering. We all know people who have had cancer and died, heart disease and died, strokes and died, and even COVID and died. Pain and the suffering, the hurt, the anguish. Life's not a Hallmark movie. Life's not a Hallmark movie because of the persistence of Satan. First Peter, Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The devil's faithful. He doesn't take any time off. He's always on the prowl. He's persistent. He wants to destroy you and your family. And if he can't get you, he'll strive for, his, uh, for your family. He is no respecter of persons. He wants to harm everybody. How many times has he had you in his bullseye and the Lord intervened? We do not know. But life's not a Hallmark movie. The devil's not fair. He doesn't play fair. He'll do anything he can to ensnare you and I, trip us up, do anything he can to destroy our lives. And I say this, life's not a Hallmark movie because of the poisons of sin. Can I say, the Bible says there is pleasure in sin for a season. If sin wasn't fun, people wouldn't sin. Hmm? If there was no high in dope or alcohol, people wouldn't partake of it. The problem is what makes you high today won't make you high tomorrow. You need something stronger. And you just get deeper and deeper and deeper in addiction. There's pleasure in sin. Not only in booze and dope, but there's pleasure in fornication. There's pleasure in carousing around. There's pleasure in lying there's pleasure in all kinds of things the problem is in the poisons of sin not only is there pleasures there's a price to be paid the Bible says for the wages of sin is death mm. oh you may enjoy sin but it only lasts for a season and then the piper comes and you've got to pay the price How many people do they show in the movies and on commercials having a beer, having a good time? They don't show you on down the road the cirrhosis of the liver. How many folks in the 70s talked about LSD being the next new drug and how great it was? But them folks, they didn't tell you about them losing their minds. Hmm. How many folks they talked about just take a little hit, it'll be all right. Uh, only to see that the needles... Give you tuberculosis. Hep C. They don't show you what it does to your body. How drugs will cause your teeth to rot out. Cause your bone structure to become weak. Affect your mind and your memory. Affect your blood vessels. Or if you have a medical problem, they can't even find a vein to give you an IV. See, sin has a price. Huh? All oh, the free sex movement of the 60s and the 70s, they didn't know AIDS was a coming. Hmm? By the way, AIDS wasn't only for the gays, but if you was gay, chances are you's getting it. But now they have the commercials where you got this magical medicine now where you don't even have to tell your partners you have AIDS anymore because you can't contract it that way. Hogwash. I'm here to tell you, there was a lot of heterosexual people died of AIDS too. See, sin has a price. Nothing is free. Not even your salvation. 
because it costs God everything. You see, sin has pleasure, sin has a price, but sin also has a penalty. He is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. So you're going to have to pay for your sins. And you will for all of eternity in hell. Unless you let Jesus pay for your sin for you. See, life's not a Hallmark movie because of the poisons of sin, but not only that, because of the pursuit of silver. Amazes me how much things control people. The Bible tells us whatever God's blessed us with to be content. Contentment with godliness is great gain. People just aren't content. Want the latest and the greatest. Hmm? Just had Christmas yesterday and kids are already filling out their list for next year. Hmm? But the pursuit of silver shows that life's not a hallmark movie. I got to thinking about this. Money can't buy endearment, can't buy love. Hmm? Money can't buy everything. Some things aren't for sale. And money certainly can't buy eternal life. Life's not a Hallmark movie. I thought about this. Life's not a Hallmark movie because of the fulfillment of the requirement right before the Lord comes back. He says the second coming of the Son of Man would be like the days of Noah. See, Noah's day, man done what was evil continually all the time. What was on his mind was evil continually. The Bible says in Noah's days they was eating and drinking and giving in marriage. In other words, they was just swapping off spouses all the time. I got to thinking, how life's not a Hallmark movie because of the parting of spouses. Now listen, if you're here today and you've been divorced, I'm not throwing off on you. But I remember a day and age where if you was divorced, that was taboo. I'm old enough to remember if you got divorced, they'd dismiss you from church. Didn't matter if you had a biblical right or not. Now thanks be unto God for the blood of Jesus Christ which cleanses us from all sin. And not all divorces are unbiblical or sinful. There's a difference in going through a divorce and the difference of entering a marriage with the mindset, if it don't work out, I'll just get divorced. Mm -mm. See, biblically, wedlock is a padlock without a key. I do believe in the vows we say, till death do you part. But you see, we live in a day and age where 60% of all marriages end in divorce within the first three years. Probably higher than that now. That's an old statistic. That's about six months old. See, life's not a Hallmark movie. Because I'm going to tell you, sometimes marriage can be difficult. Some days there aren't love flakes falling from the sky. Some days you have real problems. Some days you have money problems. Uh, 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 some days you have uh, 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 children problems. Some days you have uh, dealing with your own problems problems, huh? Some days you don't even like yourself. Just because things are hard don't mean you quit. Hmm? But yet we live in a day and age where there's a parting of spouses. Can I just say this? The children always lose. Life's not a Hallmark movie. I thought about this. Life's not a Hallmark movie because of the poor in spirituality. It amazes me how many people say they're Christian and they don't know anything about the Spirit of God or the things of God. They're Christian in name only. 
Some people didn't come to church today because they're too tired of having Christmas yesterday. That just tells you where their heart is. Hmm? You know why we have Christmas? Because Jesus came. You know why we have church? Because Jesus came. Hmm? We're doing on Sunday what the shepherds did when they got to the manger. We're worshiping the, 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 the Christ. Hmm? But you see, you know, what does that matter? I'm saved, Brother Doug. Are you really? I already am regretting next year because next year Christmas falls on Sunday and I already start getting excuses. I said this in my Sunday school class. Brother James, people love tradition more than they love truth. I already told you, we're not canceling church. We never have, we never will. If it falls on Christmas or what? Especially a holiday we're supposed to worship the Lord. We'll cancel church on Christmas when we start canceling church on Easter. But I promise you, there'll be Baptist churches closing their doors because of Christmas. You know what that does to the Lord? Revelation 3, he'll spew them out of his mouth. You know why Jesus didn't tell us the day he was born in this world? Because he didn't want a holiday celebrating his birth. He wanted the Lord's Day to celebrate him. You're welcome, done made you mad, but life's not a Hallmark movie. Every one of them movies, that whole town throws up Christmas. I'd love to see one where they just all about Christ. Life's not a Hallmark movie. But I've got some good news. There is pardon for our sin. Jesus Christ did go to the cross and pay your sin debt. Jesus Christ did pay for your death, your hell, and your sin on the cross of Calvary. He rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave to prove He was Lord. And He allowed you to hear the gospel so you could believe on Him and be saved from your sins. Friend, the work's been done for you to be saved. The only thing that is required now is for you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to repent of your sins and trust Him as Lord and Savior. Your only means for salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? That is amazing. A lot of folks make a lot of excuses why they won't get saved. Here's the bottom line, Brother Donald. If they know that they're lost, if they know Jesus died for their sins and that He was buried and rose again, and if they know that He'll save them if they call them, the only reason they don't get saved is they love their sin and their situation more than the thought of being saved from it. Friend, you might love your sin one day too long. You might die and go to hell. If you do die and go to hell, it won't be Jesus' fault. It won't be Emmanuel Baptist Church's fault. It won't be this preacher's fault. It'll be your fault. Because you didn't believe on the Lord. If I was here today and not saved, I'd run to an altar and get saved. This thing's a winding down quicker than we can imagine. There is good news. Life's not a Hallmark movie, but there is a pardon for your sin. Your sins can be forgiven, and your life can be changed. You can become a child of God. What a blessing i got good news. There is peace of the Savior. It don't matter how much peril there is in the street. i got peace in my soul. It don't matter what a day brings forth. I know one day I'm going home. There is peace. Do you have peace today? I can put my head on my pillow at night and go to sleep because i got peace. And I don't need any melatonin to do it. Hmm? Why? Because I know the Master. Hmm? And let me say this last thing. There is purpose and satisfaction in serving Jesus. Happiest you'll ever be is serving the Lord. Hmm? Crowd that lays out church, they're not happy. They're not satisfied. But I want to tell you, that, that crowd that loves Jesus and tells folks about Jesus and wants to live for Jesus, that crowd that prays and reads their Bible and seeks the Lord, guess what? That's a happy crowd. You'll find 
that there's satisfaction in serving Jesus. There's purpose for your life. So many people wander aimlessly through life not knowing why they're here. Ecclesiastes tells us why we're here. We're to fear God. We're to serve Him. But yet, so many people don't know the purpose. What is the meaning of life? Fear God. Give Him glory with your life. Reverence Him with your lips. That's the purpose for life. When you realize that, oh, your life is so fulfilled. Is your life fulfilled today? Let me help you something. Life's not a Hallmark movie. You can sit in a corner in a fetal position wishing and hoping for a better life. I'm going to tell you how to have it right now. Give your heart and life to Jesus. You'll have the best life you could ever have. Say, so what happens when problems come? Just get to Jesus. What happens when troubles come? Just get to Jesus. It'll be all right once you get to Him. Because He'll help you do it all. See, without Jesus, you're having to bear it all yourself. But see, with Jesus... He not only bears your problems, He bears you. And oh, there's nothing like knowing Him. Life's not a Hallmark movie. It's better if you know Jesus. I wonder today, do you know Him? If you don't know Him, you can today. You can be born again. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. If you come during the invitation, we'll get somebody to show you, take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend another moment in this world lost. Say, preacher, I know I'm saved. But there's just something missing. Why don't you get in the altar and ask God to fill it? Take care of it. He'll help you, friend. He's a present help in time of need. But the Bible says you have not because you ask not. And what you're asking for is things. What you need to ask for is Him. Hmm? That's what you need. Might be here, might be saved, might be satisfied, might be serving God. You ought to be thankful. You ought to get in the altar and thank God that God's been so good to you. I don't know what your need is, but I know what the scriptures say. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. If that's all that can be said of your life, you've got a sad, miserable life. But verse 14 says, If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. See, a Christian don't die. He just changes his wardrobe. We put off this corruptible and put on incorruptible. We put off this mortal and put on immortality. Huh? What a blessing. I'm glad. I'm looking for the change when I become like him. But see, if you're here today and lost, you'll have a change too. You'll have an eternal body. And you'll suffer in hell forever because you would not repent and trust Jesus as your Savior. Why don't you do that today? Why don't you start your own story that's far better than any Hallmark movie? A love story between you and Jesus. It can start today. Will you give your life to Jesus? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're coming, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, I know why Hallmark movies are so popular. They're positive. There's so much negativity in the world, people just want to see something positive. Oh, if they could ever learn the real secret of life, it's more than positive. It's peaceful, and it's in Christ. God, I pray if there's somebody here today unsaved, today would be the day of their salvation. God, I pray the Holy Ghost would convict them remove all their obstacles, hindrances, and excuses. Lord, help them to come, give their life to Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, you'd hang them over hell, help them feel the flames of hell. Lord, I pray you'd make them so uncomfortable they, they couldn't stay lost. They'd want to come and get born again. God, I pray for the child of God that's living beneath their privileges. Lord, they're not what they should be. I pray they'd come and become what they should be. Get some help from the Lord. And that choice is saint, God. I pray you just bless them, put another log on their fire, and help them in the goodness of God. Blessing this invitation. Speak to hearts. God, we pray for Holy Ghost conviction. Have your will and way, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen.
If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.